The Float Killer Smart Probe Well 2 is a great product to replace float switches for any water well storage tank. It installs easily and quickly. Thank you for taking the time to review this installation guide. It's a step-by-step -step guide of how it would be installed in your water system. This typical water system should look like what you already have or are planning to set up. Here is your Float Killer Smart Probe Kit. It includes the power supply, the sensor with 20 feet of four conductor wire, coupler nuts, jam nuts, coupler jackets, and colored heat shrink tubing. For this application you will need a Phillips and slotted screwdrivers, scissors, four stainless steel extension rods all thread quarter twenty, two three-eighths inch open-ended wrenches, two inch bulkhead fitting, two inch slip by mail thread coupler, a heat gun, and wire cutters. First and foremost, we cannot stress enough that the most important thing is to make sure the power to the panel you will be working on is turned off at the breaker, so you're working on a panel that has no power while you make these connections. We will tell you when the power should be turned back on. Simply place the float killer power supply into the panel in a convenient location and secure the plate with screws to the box. Next, determine the length of each of the sensor rods to add extensions to the sensor head's color-coded threaded rods. Use quarter twenty stainless steel all thread rods for each sensor end. Each rod should be measured and cut to their desired length based on function. From longest to shortest, the black rod needs to be the longest. The brown rod is the low water indicator, the white rod is the fill start, and the orange rod is the fill stop. Next you will need to apply the colored heat shrink. Remove the heat shrink from the bag, unroll one strip of heat shrink and cover over its respective rod. Add the proper colored heat shrink tubing to each, leaving about one and a half to two inches of the rod exposed on the sensor side, and about one inch on the side that connects to the sensor head. Heat shrink the tubing around the all thread rods. Attach the extensions to the respective rod by using a jam nut from the bag in the kit and twist it just below the heat shrink on the top rod of the sensor head. Next, take a coupler nut and twist it underneath the jam nut on the same rod. A second jam nut will be placed all the way onto the extension rod. Screw the rods together. Twist the bottom jam nut against the coupler. Use two wrenches to secure the coupler nut and bottom jam nut, making sure this entire assembly is tight. Repeat this process for all rod extensions. To secure this connection, add the coupler jacket over the jam and coupling nuts and heat. Shrink small enough to see the outline of nuts. Finally, add a spacer by aligning the holes of the spacer with the extension rods and slide above the bottom of the orange rod's sensor tip. Apply small heat shrink below the spacer on long rods. Do not overheat this material, otherwise the colored heat shrink will expand. When mounting the sensor, embedded in the epoxy is the circuit board that connects the sensor rods to the output wires. The rods are not directly connected to the wire connections. Drill the correct size hole through the top of the tank for a two inch bulkhead fitting. Through the manhole place the bottom piece of the bulkhead fitting, then twist the top bulkhead fitting into the bottom fitting. Add the coupler. Place the sensor inside the coupler and secure it with screws. Remove the float connections. Connect 110 volts to the terminal block of the float killer power supply. It has one white, one black, and one green wire. Connect the sensor wires to the terminal block with four wires. Connect the sensor wires red to red, blue to blue, white to white, and green to green. Float killer switches replace float connections controlling the well and booster pumps. It's ready for use. Turn the power to the panel back on. In this situation, the normally open number three terminals are for the well pump and the normally closed number four terminals are for the booster pump. When a relay is switched, its LED is green and red when it's not switched. With the water above the brown rod, the booster pump will remain on and the LED will remain red. If the water drops below the brown rod, the LED turns green and relay switches open to not allow the booster pump to operate. When a relay is switched, its LED is green and red when it's not switched. With the water above the brown rod, the booster pump will remain on and the LED will remain red. If the water drops below the brown rod, 
the LED turns green and relay switches open to not allow the booster pump to operate. Enjoy the float killer and its dependable performance for years to come. If you have any questions, feel free to contact our team at Water Level Controls. Thanks for watching.